This is a Pod Dealers Network podcast. What is TWS podcast uh, episode? Whatever. Who cares at this point? Oh. <laughs> the rants with the vindicated. It's my podcast. And I do what I want to. People, listen. Word is it still alive? It's not working for me, Rich. Right, we gonna keep going. I but know I changed my voice at work. Bars on the radio. Oh, what is TWS podcast? Well, I'm ready. I feel like the staring at my watch and I'm feeling so new school. Suicide attempts, how many tries to take? Damn, 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 Wasn't sure this day ever would come. Just because you want a girl don't mean you're ready for one. Give you the closet and I split the bedroom with you. I'm trying to sweep you off your feet and jump the broom with you. I mean, for real. I'm doing my own thing. Love is always out of way of I know I problem I would I promised I would uh, never sing again, but you know, you gotta finish that line. Anyway, welcome to another episode of the What Is TWS podcast. As always, I'm your boy J Dot Flam representing the White Pants Society. And I gotta start the way I always start by thanking you first and foremost for taking whatever time out of your day to come chill with me, listen to my random ramblings, whatever I do here. Uh, you could be anywhere else in the world, but you're here with me, and I do greatly, greatly appreciate that. Man, got another special guest on the episode today. We're going to introduce her in just a second. I think we got an interesting topic. We're going to see where this goes. We're going to freestyle another one. I don't have anything scripted, so I'm, I'm going off script, but uh, it's going to work out. I'm putting it in putting it in the Lord's hands. Anyway, uh, let me do the Chef Elise report real quick. Out of Pepe. You know I am. Uh, man, not a whole lot of extra stuff. I'm recording these shows like back to back to back, so like nothing new has happened between me and Chef Elise since the last time I did one of these, um, but I did leave out something. I'm a big sports fan, and you know it's uh, NBA playoff time, so I'm watching the games. My daughter uh, doesn't know much about basketball. All she knows is she likes Space Jam 2. So we're watching Space Jam 2, and uh, and she looks at me, and she asks me, is LeBron James a real person? So I was like, all right, you know, that's an easy fix. Yes, LeBron James is a real person. I thought about trying to take her to like a Spurs game or something when LeBron was in town, but... I'm cheap, so that's not what we're going to do. Uh, I figured it's playoff time. LeBron is playing. We'll turn the game on. She'll see him live on TV. You know, she'll understand that that's a, a real person. What I didn't expect is for my daughter to, like, straight groupie out on this dude. It was it was mad uncomfortable. It was crazy uncomfortable. She, like, she just went into a whole different mode as soon as, as, soon as she's seen him. And then, and I don't even know where the fuck she got this from. At some point... He hit a shot or something, and she was like, and that's why they call him the king. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I, You are seven years old, little girl. Like, That's a grown-ass man, and you are seven years old. I need you to chill. I'm not ready. I'm not. I'm not ready. So, so far, I know that she likes LeBron, and she likes uh, Patrick Mahomes is her favorite football player. So she all across the gambit. She got the light skinned nigga with the curly head, and then she got the dude with no hairline, and it. like it's it's crazy. Um, I salute her for that, for you know diversifying her bonds, not not having a type at this point. But I need her to chill. I really need her to chill. Y'all pray for me. But that's that's all I got for the Chef Elise report. It kind of feeds into what we're gonna talk about today. Out of Pepe. You know I am. All right, so let me introduce my special guest. Um, She's been on a lot of shows that I've been on, you know, recently. Uh, we got a chance to chop it up. I know she's getting ready to start up her podcast, but I'm going to let her talk about that. But I got got my homie Johnny with me. How you doing today? I'm good. Thank you for pronouncing my name correctly, too, by the way. Yeah, I'm, I'm not smashed. Uh, I'm not smashed. <laughs> I hate when he say Johnny. Anyway, um, yes, my name is Johnny, um, and I have a podcast called Anonymously Beautiful. I took a break. Um, I'm waiting to be inspired again to get back in the game. Um, so I'm not really sure when I'm going to get back. But like I said, I need some, some inspiration. So it might take me a little while. I got you. But thank you for having me on, Flan. I appreciate you. Of course, of course. Finally. Like, you know, what I respect the most is that so I was I was telling my previous guest I ain't gonna say no names but it's probably gonna uh it's probably gonna spark a rebuttal episode anyway but uh you know, 
my show is in the personal journals category. So by definition, like it's a personal, I don't normally have guests on because it's just me talking about my life. Uh, but when I do have guests on, we need to have a topic. And so people be like, hey, Flame, when are you going to have me on your show? I'm like, what are we going to talk about? Anything. Nah, that don't work. Mm-hmm. For the first time, somebody said, hey, you know, I'm trying to be on the show. I was like, all right, bet. What, we, what you want to talk about? And without, like, without, I don't even think you gave it much thought. You were just like, bow, dating in the 30s. Yeah. So, so. Because I know, because I know I want to, like, I know that would be a subject we could, like, bounce off of. Because, you know, you're at your age and I'm at my age. <laughs> You know, we have different, don't laugh. We have different perspectives, you know, and we grew up in different times. So I was like, oh, that'd be perfect. Yeah. It's, it, I mean, it's, it's taking some getting used to being at the age where like somebody, an, another adult can say to you, we grew up in different times. Like I'm that old that you an adult, but I was, <laughs> my adult life and your adult life is still like two different times. Like that's, it hurts, but it's the truth. So <laughs> it is what it is. But but that's why I played that. Like, why you don't like your age? Like what? Like what? What is it that bothers you about being the age that you are? Because I mean, on the real, I don't feel like forty one sounds middle aged. Like I don't feel like a middle aged man. <laughs> like I I still like nothing changed. Like I, I think I expected that. Like over time, you just like I don't know. You would just adjust into being older or whatever. It's like nothing. Nothing has ever changed with the way like my mind. I still play Madden and shit like that. I don't. I don't feel like an old man and now. All of a sudden, like it happens so fast when you like you you at work and you the youngest person there. And now I mm-hmm. go to work and I be like the oldest person there. And I'm trying to <laughs> figure out when the fuck that happened. But like, hey, I'm around a lot of people and I'm like the oldest person in the group. I'm like, when did this? When did this transition? But you're around a lot of white people. I am around a lot of white people. Even even in our little group, I don't like. Uh, I think what Raw is like the closest, but I'm a little bit older than him, and most people wouldn't even guess that looking at the two of us. But you know, I'm a little bit older than Raw. <laughs> hey, I gotta send my shots because I know he. I know you he know got that, one. Uh, I gotta send my shots. Listen, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but like, I just knew he was gonna be unk. Like, I just knew it. Like, he just got that unk. You know that old drunken unk at the cookout. Oh, that's always old pervy. At the young yeah, old pervy, yeah. creepy um. Yes, that's him. <laughs> the one you got to monitor his drinks because after a couple, yeah. he might get a little handsy. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yo, <laughs> yo, we go in. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's that's why I played that that particular song uh-huh. to open this episode. I said uh-huh. from Add to it's a drink called Jump the Broom. Uh, uh-huh. So like, it's one of my favorite like R and B hip hop tracks. I guess it's nothing R and B about it. It's, it's mad hip hop. It's like a hip hop love song. But that whole line like just because you want a girl don't mean you're ready for one. Uh, he got another line in there. He was like getting married, staying married. That's two different things. And I definitely, I definitely understand that one. Um, uh-huh. But you know, so for me, like the dating, the whole idea of dating and stuff like that is so like it's just it's just so weird to me that I don't, I don't even want to do it. Like y'all know, I'm just. I've hung it up. I'm done. For you, what's what's the issues that you having right now with dating at at this age, <clears throat> over thirty? I think. <laughs> Don't, why are you laughing at me? I didn't even say that yet. <laughs> no, honestly, I think that the guys my age still don't know what they want. Like they're still not out of their, I guess, like whole phase. And they're like player phase. It's kind of like they're. It's kind of like they're still in their, in their early twenties right now. And I know that women mature more than men. Um, you know, but like it just seems like nobody wants. I'm gonna say I'm not gonna say nobody. I'm gonna say a few, a few people want what I want, like marriage commitment. You know, somebody to. Somebody to be a partner, you know, shit like that. But it's like it's it's not like hip anymore. I mean, it's like it's not you know, like it's not in. Yeah. Like it's like a sap. Like I like my son be like, oh, that's sap behavior. I'm like, so being nice to a girl is sap behavior. He's eight years old. I'm like, damn. damn. How you gonna feel when you twenty something years old? You gonna feel like, you know what I'm saying? But I I do think like yeah, that's definitely. 
That's definitely like the vibe these days. I had a conversation. I was in one of them Twitter spaces. I never felt so old in my whole fucking life. First of all, I ain't like I ain't understand the whole concept of Twitter spaces. Somebody's like, you need to be on this to promote the podcast or whatever. It's like, bet I do it. As I jump on this Twitter space and I'm trying to figure out like how you talk and who's the who's the host and all that type of shit. There was a bunch. I realized real quick without asking anybody, I'm clearly the oldest motherfucker in here. And then, uh, <laughs> and then they was like having conversations about relationships and marriage and stuff like that. And you know, it really it came out fast. Like this generation don't believe in marriage. Like to them, it's a why would you do it? It's a I've heard people say like it's a bad contract. It's a contract I would never sign. It, it don't work in your favor. And uh, I found myself like I really do believe in marriage. You know, I loved being married. I think that's why I don't want to date because I don't want to date. Like I don't. I either want to be in a marriage, in a committed relationship, or just nothing. I don't even want that little weird gray area in between. Like I just want to meet somebody and be like, all right, good. But me and you forever. Bet. Let's go. Uh, but like I was trying to figure out, like come up with an argument for why marriage is good or why you should get married. And I was like, I really, I really, I couldn't think of nothing. I was like, I couldn't, I can't defeat this shit. Y'all, y'all, y'all kind of right. I, I, you know, but what is it about marriage that makes it a goal for you? And why do you think people don't want it anymore? Oh, 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 you got the question today. You woke up on the right side of the bed today, huh? Um, okay, so what was the first one again? What What is it about? What are you looking forward to in terms of marriage? Okay, so like I said, like a life partner, you know, somebody I can share everything with, um, somebody I can spend all of my time with, um, and someone to be an example for my son. You know, I think that's, I think that's when it like hit me when I had when he started getting older and I started to hear like guys say like, you know, boys are going to emulate some type of man in their life. Yeah. Right. And Lord knows I do not want him to emulate his daddy. So I want someone who is, you know, honest, um, a man who keeps his word, you know, somebody who is respectful. Um, and it's important for him at this age to see, you know, a, a good man, you know, loving his mother, like, yeah. cause he saw, he saw the, like, some of the fights that me and his dad had. So I don't want that image to be etched in his mind to think that that's okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and what was the second question? Well, what, why do you think, you know, this generation or people your age, cause I, for me, I think I hear it from women too, or either women feel like they, it don't exist. So then they're like, because I can't have it, then I'm just going to go this complete other way. But it just, it seems like across the board, like people don't believe in marriage. Don't, you know, don't think it's something that they should do. You know, what do you think might contribute to that? I think cause people don't think it's lit. Like I think cause people, you know, want, <clears throat> want the wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Like they don't want the, the hard work that really comes with it. And the, yeah. you know what I'm saying? The, the sacrifices that you have to make, like they don't want the, they don't want to do the work. It's like, you know, on a test, like, what, what would you rather do? Have all the answers or, or, you know, figure out the answers for yourself. You feel right. what I'm saying? So I think that's one of the main things. And then too, it's like, you know, city girls is up, city boys is up. It's like, you know, it's like, it's like in the music, it's in the music. It's in a, it's in a, it's in everything. If you really think about it, it's in everything. And it's like programming people to want to live this lifestyle. And most of these people are married. Cardi B. Right. Talking about, I don't cook. I don't clean. Bitch, you be on your knees. Okay? Cleaning and sucking dick. So, oh, can I curse? Yeah. Oh, here we okay. go. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, Fuck you, D raw. Fuck you, raw. I, this is I your fault. <laughs> Deacon, I have to act. Because, you know, you know, we live for the Lord. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, like, she be saying all of this crazy shit, you know, woman empowerment shit and leaving a nigga right where he at, but you got a whole husband. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. they put out this agenda for us, right? To follow, to take like the man out of the equation, which that's not how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to, I see why it's supposed to be a two house 
household income, you know, like a household to keep it running. Like, I see why. This shit hard. Yeah. I am a, uh, listen, if I, let me tell you something. I told you what my stripper name is going to be if I got to go strip. Okay. Coco. Uh-huh. What I say? Coco something. Coco Diamond. Some shit like that. But if I got to go do that, I'm going to go do that because ain't no man in my house to help me. You know what I'm saying? It's like one hand washes the other, but it's everything is being programmed. So it's like hard. It's hard for, it's even hard for a man. I, I can, I can imagine all this big booty girls. And these uh, <laughs> uh, uh, silicone titties and, 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 you know, these Sick. fake coochies and stuff. You know, you never know. Like, it's a lot of, <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of, um, how you say, distractions um, going on in all these dating websites and stuff like that. Like, you got a girl at home, right? You got a girl at home and the dating website pop up and there's a big booty girl and then this bitch laying in the bed with a damn 90 on. You know, one of them grandma 90s. <laughs> Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like grandma night. Grandma night is lit. Grandma's bills were paid. She was she was taken care of. It's a reason for I that. I know, shit. but that was that time. Like this is this is no, this is not the same time. Like nigga, and that's another thing too. Niggas don't like to pay bills. Glenn, you're cheap. Okay, I am cheap. Yes. cheap. But listen, you got to pay. You got to pay a bill too. You got to pay like you wait, baby. I'm paying the bills now. I'm like <laughs> in terms of like. Be going out to buy a bag, or you want the red bottoms and all that. Like, if that's not the if that's not the tax bracket we in, then I'm sorry, baby. Like, we not. I'm not going into debt so a nigga can stunt on some some other broke niggas. Like, why are we stunting on other broke niggas? Like, that's that's retarded. Like, you know I'm saying, I let's go on a trip, and I might find that shit on Groupon. But we about to, you know, we about to go out and have some fun. Like, you know, why I gotta spend the most money if I can save some here and there? Like. Nah, I understand. Yeah. You you gonna find a cruise on Groupon? Bet. You gonna Bet. be you gonna be going to Tilligan's Island like the one at Martin. Keep it up. Man. I man. this is how cheap I am, because that's like my proposal to my wife. It wasn't even a proposal. Mm-hmm. It wasn't even like it it wasn't romantic. I am a little embarrassed by it, but it is what it is. Like it was it was just real shit. Like he was watching TV one day and I had already been thinking about it. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, you know what? We should probably get married. I've been looking at elopement website on Groupon, and, and she was and she was with it. And we we fucking we pretty much eloped. We uh we invite. I mean, we had like seventeen people at our wedding because we found they got this dope spot down here in uh, in Austin. It's called the Wizard Academy on some like Harry Potter type shit. But uh, they got like a little chapel over the, over a cliff, and it's free. Like they just like support love, so like it's free. We went out there. Got married, spent you know next to nothing on that. Probably I probably spent more on my suit than anything else. Oh my god! Uh, so you got married next to Dumbledore? It it wasn't like that. Like it was <laughs> the name of the place is the Wizard Academy, but the little spot where they married people at was very, is very wow. very nice. See now, see nice. I would have I would have assumed you like got on one knee, had the rose petals out. One candle or something, you know what I'm saying? You ask somebody sitting on a couch? That's crazy. Yeah. I ain't even stand up. <laughs> but, but <laughs> I ain't, she didn't get a uh, she didn't get an engagement ring till we was like two years into the marriage. But uh, because marriage and all that stuff, like we had, I think that like stopped some people too. Is the whole paying for a wedding, paying for Ooh. an engagement ring when that shit don't have nothing to do with being married. Like, okay. The Let wedding it, the wedding ends real fast and then you got the rest of your life, like you said, with work to do to keep this shit going. Okay, so let me say this. If she wanted the ring at a certain time, would you have compromised with her? Like, say for instance, y'all got y'all got me and she was like, Okay, well, five months in, I want my ring, please. Would you have compromised with that instead of waiting the two years or yeah, and if, if if I felt like it was something that was important to her, um, I definitely would have done it. I got her the ring when I finally did, because we had other friends around us that was getting engaged, and they was all getting mm-hmm. rings, and I didn't want her to be the married lady around these fiancés that don't got nothing to, nothing to mm-hmm. floss. So I'm like, you know, mm-hmm. let me not put... I don't like the way... She never complained about it, but I'm like, I don't like the way that looks for her. I mm-hmm. know that's got to feel some kind of way. Let me go ahead and fix that situation. So, I mean, I would have I done whatever for her it took you know, 
to to keep my wife happy. Like I was, you know, I was I took pride in being a dad. But I get what you were saying earlier because for me, one of the things that did stop me from getting married, you know, I was probably thirty three. I don't know how old I was. I was thirty something when I got married. Uh, but what stopped me from probably doing it earlier was that I didn't. I didn't grow up around it, you know. So mm-hmm. I didn't. I didn't know what a husband like. What a, what a marriage looked like. But how to be a husband. How to be a father. I never saw it, and so it really. Like it really had me in it. I was like a little afraid of that. Like I don't know what to do. So why would I do it? Like why would I jump out there and do something like that? And there may be a lot of guys that's going through that too. But uh, now I, I feel I think people are just lazy. <laughs> they don't want to do the work for mm-hmm. commitment, and and it really looks like commitment don't exist anymore because the divorce rate is crazy. So it's like you get married. Like what's what's a marriage if you can just leave? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I got, uh, I had an aunt and uncle that was like 80 years old and couldn't stand each other, but they was, you know, I chose that nigga and he chose her. So they was going to rock it out. Right. And I think, I think that's my problem. I think I'm looking for the old school love and these new school fools. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And I think that, I think that I've been over my head or, I'm in the wrong state or I'm in the wrong city because it's like, I swear to God, you, I'll meet a guy. We, you know what I'm saying? We chopping it up, whatever, whatever, whatever. A few months down the line, we kicking it, whatever. And then we begin to, you know, shoot the shit. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Duck, right, yeah, I got duck, you. you know, roll around in the bed sheets, right? So, mm-hmm. and then like, it just seems like they start acting crazy. And I'm like, is it my vagina? Am I asking for too much? Like, you start to question your, you start to question yourself. And I know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a good person. Like overall, I may be like, I'm not. I wouldn't say. I I would say like I like to have debate. I don't like to argue. I like to have debate. Um, okay. But like, I just don't understand what. Like, I don't understand the, because I told him from from the beginning, like, yo. This is what I want, you know what I'm saying? Eventually, not right, not tomorrow, but you know, you know, eventually, like, I want to, you know, be married. Like, I want to be with you or with somebody, you know, whatever. And then they, in the beginning, oh, yeah, 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 you know, they with it. And then as soon as they get the box, they start acting crazy. Like, <laughs> like they start acting fool. I mean, like, you wasn't calling in acting crazy this way before I give you so it makes me want to not give the box out you know what I'm saying like it makes me want to like in in be introvert like it makes me want to just like hold my like close my legs and I want to <laughs> open my legs man I, I want to open my legs you know what I'm saying like I want I want I want to I want to I, you know what I'm saying I like you know intimacy you know what I'm saying but if you're going to start acting crazy, I can't, I, I gotta, it's like I'm trying to preserve myself. Like, I gotta save myself. But it, Kevin Sam, Kim Samuels made me feel some type of way, telling myself, oh, if you 30 and over, you need to put that shit on a uh, market 50% off or some shit like that. Like, damn. Like, why can't, I can't go into myself, I can't go into celibacy because I've had a child before? <clears throat> like, what's wrong with that? Now, nah, I mean, I I say for me, especially on the dating sites, and this is, and I I'm gonna ask you this too, but this yeah. is this is a problem I have. Like I would I look for the women with children because to me, not mm-hmm. that I just like love single mothers or nothing, but to me, <laughs> if you have a kid, if you have a kid, at least mm-hmm. that's proof or some proof to me that you was actually born a, a woman. Oh, like, and I say, I be trying to figure this. This is one of the questions I have for like this new age dating, like. How do you ask that question? How do you ask that question? Like, I, you know, before we go any further, I just need to know. Like, when you came, when you, when they slapped you on the ass, when you came out, like, what was on the other side of that ass? I need to know. <laughs> like, I'm not asking you what you, you know, if that's, if you identify, that's cool. I, 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 your choice. I'm just trying to, you know what I'm saying? I have a preference. I think when you I'm know, saying, I, like, you know, like, like, if I'm if I see a picture and I'm talking to somebody, 
Like, you kind of know, like, it's a masculine energy, a normal masculine energy that men have that can't be duplicated. I don't give a damn what hormone pills you take. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's just a certain way, it's a certain way that the person acts to me. I don't know about anybody else. I ain't never been fooled. In my 30, I'll be 33 soon. Um, September, but in my thirty something years, I've never been like ca- uh, transgender fished. I'm not trying to find out the hard way. I'm not trying to <laughs> crying game. All that stuff. I seen. I seen one girl profile, and she had kids. Said she had kids, but in the profile, it said transitioning. And I was like, man, from what to what? I need to. You got to specify. Like you can't just. Wait, but she didn't transition from house from from apartment to a house. Now, wait a minute. Well, then, nigga, say that, <laughs> say that shit. Don't just put transitioning. That means a lot right now. I need to know where you started and where you trying to go. Please <laughs> be specific. Yo. Well, for you, like these dudes, this these dudes is going crazy. Like, where where are you meeting these dudes? Are are you a dating site kind of person? Is this just out and about? Like, um, how you how you how you meet people these days? I'm gonna be honest. Some I met. <clears throat> on a site, some I met like in person. I'm in a grocery store, you know what I'm saying? Blah, 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 kick the shit, and then, you know, slid my number or whatever. Um, but like I said, it's just like, I just feel like it's a, a ongoing cycle, like, of fucking the same shit. Like, I'm, I want somebody to come in and do something different. Like, come in. Act crazy first, didn't get the issue. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you niggas, I mean, these niggas act the same. Every one of them. I'm like, yo, what the freak? But then they're like, oh, you know, like they'll tell me, like, oh, you know, I can't, I can't, I don't feel like I feel like I could be the one to like give you what you need. Like, and I understand that you ain't faithful, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, whatever. But like I feel like eventually you need to grow up. And work through that issue because that's an issue to me. You can't be faithful. That's an issue. What do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, that's, I, I don't know. Like, for me, that was, I ain't gonna say that was never a problem because I definitely, I, I never cheated on my wife. I definitely, like, we, people <laughs> used to ask us before we got divorced and it just seemed like we was, you know, the perfect couple. They were like, man, how do y'all stay together? And we used to tell them, like, we've, we've done every foul thing you could do to another person. And then you just, you look up and like, nigga, you still here? <laughs> Shit, we might as well just, we might as well rock this out then. Like, you know, if you, you, you still, you, you, you sure? All right. You know, cause yeah, we did, it was bad. Like we, we, we did all the fucked up things you could do to another person and uh, for whatever reason stayed. But I, I knew like marriage still means something to me. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, if I wouldn't even like, I wouldn't even do nothing with a married woman. Like I respect, I would probably respect her marriage more than she does. Cause that, that means something to me, mm-hmm. but it it don't mean anything to people anymore. Like you know, uh, getting married is either people don't want to do it, or if they they do do it, it don't feel like a it don't feel like a real commitment to them. They feel like I, right. you know, you say stuff like "till death do us part," and in the moment you're not happy, you're like I'm gone. Right. I don't have to be. A, it didn't say I had to be unhappy, but you know, it ain't always gonna be happy. Sometimes you gotta work through this shit. I will say this: I ain't gonna I ain't gonna mess up no no home now, darling. With no marriage, but I'm I fuck up an apartment, okay? You hear me? <laughs> or a trailer, okay? <laughs> you know, I'm just I'm just being honest, and I would say that you're right. <clears throat> I would say that once someone feels like something isn't serving them, they're so quick to just call it quits. Like nobody's willing to stick out. I done been through hell, okay, with the brokest nigga you could think of. And, um, I feel like I can withstand some shit so I yeah. can go through a marriage shit. That ain't nothing compared to what the fuck I've been through. You know what I'm saying? Like, so all I need is somebody to just go through the storm with me. And that's the problem. Nobody wants, everybody wants to be in the rain, but nobody wants to get wet. You feel me? I got you. That's, that's the sound bite right there. Can you stand the rain? <laughs> oh, uh-huh. <laughs> but let me okay, go ahead. let me ask you this because we when we was in the group chat mm-hmm. like you said you wanted to do this topic 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and you've you've talked about like the dudes your age, mm-hmm. you know, don't seem to have it have it in them to do this whole commitment thing. Mm-hmm. But you was like, and y'all old niggas is blah blah blah. So what is what's your issue with the older nigga oh. that might have got grown out of their whole phase and ready to? Do we have enough time? Out? Do we have Let's enough go. time? Let's go. <laughs> Listen. Let's go. Let me tell you. Okay. Prime example. So. I was working at this job. I met this guy. He was older than me. He's actually 40. We just turned 40 this year. So we were talking, whatever, whatever, whatever. We was cool at first, right? And then we became, like, we were friends for, like, four years. We didn't kiss anything, nothing, right? And then we started, like, talking, like, trying to see where things go, right? So we ended up having a sexual encounter. Um, and right. (laughs) And I just feel like he was, he was like playing games too. And I'm just like, nigga, you are three times my senior. Stop playing. Like, and because he would say like things like, oh, I want this. I want that. Like I'm at an age where I need this and I need that. But in all actuality, I feel like he was doing that to get my vagina now but i was his friend so why i just don't understand why he couldn't just tell me like yo you know what i'm saying i just want to smash you feel me like why lie about like why pretend to be this fucking superman batman you know i got that group on and you (laughs) and you really the damn joker out here in these streets that's what i'm saying so it's like it's, it's worse because you know the game you play the game on young girls or younger girls knowing that you can get over on them because they're not privy to the shit and you mask it because it's your, you know, like, you know what the fuck you doing, you know what I'm saying? And then you going to backtrack. Like, that's crazy to me. And you owe the shit. You damn near about to kick the bucket. You might as well get married. <laughs> like, what the Nigga fuck? 40 is about to kick the bucket. God <laughs> damn, damn near. Cause okay, so then let's be uh, honest. Let's damn. be honest. Let's be honest. You're 41. Ten more years, you'll be what? I'll be 51. Exactly. And I still have another good 30 years. But to hold go. on. I'm good. You don't even know what's you don't even know how your body is gonna change in at 50. You don't know if you're gonna have a hunchback. You don't even know if you're gonna have you don't even know if you're gonna be a diabetical and get one of your toes cut off. You don't know that. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm trying to lock it in now. So I so so when I had a stroke, I already had somebody there that's got us. You know, they said they was gonna stay with. I know my whole left side don't work, but I need you right. to like you signed on right. for this shit. Like, but that's over. what I'm saying. It's worse for the older guys because you know that y'all about to die soon, and you still playing around. You get what I'm saying? Like y'all gonna play until y'all dick stop working. That's how I feel. I sometimes I know for me, like I, people used to call me a, a serial monogamous. Like I would. In my mind, every relationship was she the one. Whoa. Just every time, every time, like she the one, and and so that's and that I meant it. Like I meant it when I said it. But all that shit I was doing was was genuine, legit. And then one day I woke up, and you did some crazy shit, and I was like, "Oh shit, uh, I don't think I could do this for the rest <laughs> of my life. I gotta, <laughs> I think I gotta, I gotta make a move. I gotta figure some shit out." And it's like I ain't never meant to falsely get us there. I wanted it to go there. And then at some point I realized, you know, so I got I learned I have to be slower mm. to like reach that stage in my head. Like I can't just, you know, but, at, and like I said, at this point, I don't want it there. I do. I want to go straight to, but I'm at a point now where I could do the, I don't like you, but I love you and we together. And so we're going, we're going to work it out. But yeah, you crazy. And I don't, but I said, it's me and you, I could just do that. I could commit to that. It's me and you, it's me and you. Today I don't like you. It might have been a long time since I liked you, but I fuck it. We going we going to keep going. We going to wake up. I'm going to kiss you good kiss you goodbye as I go to work and uh complain to my coworkers <laughs> the whole day about this crazy chick that I got to live with. <laughs> so you was a read nigga. So that's what you saying? That's it. that's what that's what I oh yeah, read nigga. Yeah, I was read nigga, you know, a little bit. And now and you know what's crazy? People bit. my friends call me a hopeless romantic, but I'm like, yo, like I feel like I've thought about love my whole life like I I don't feel like I lacked any love when I was growing up but I just 
love the idea of love. Like I love the idea of being in love and having a person like, and having a best friend and somebody to sleep with. And like, you know what I'm saying? All of things, all of the things under that umbrella in one person, you know what I'm saying? Um, and yeah. they, they be saying I fall in love quick too, but, but technically a week is not really quick. Like I feel like a week, a week is a long enough time for me to know if you're my true love or not. Call me crazy. Crazy. <laughs> I call you crazy. Like a, a week, a week. I, I was with you until I was with you right up until the a week. My nigga. Oh shit. Common got, Common got a line where he like, it don't take a whole day to recognize sunshine. And that, they used to be my go-to like, yeah, nigga, don't take a whole day to recognize sunshine. That, that's why I'm rocking with her the way I'm rocking with her. But a week, my nigga? Like, uh, Okay, okay, okay. Two weeks. Know. Okay. All right, so are, are you the are you the I say I love you first type person? Mm, um I used to be. I don't anymore. Okay, I I say learned, that after a week. Right. I learned because I'm blocking. No, because <laughs> I I I feel I feel like I feel like when I say it it makes a guy like super duper crazy. And I don't want a. I don't want to be crazy. Like I want you. Like if I say I love you, I want you to be like, okay, all right. I think we can. I can. I think we can do this love thing. Not oh, bitch, where you at? Where you at? Oh, you going out with your friends? Oh, oh, you said you love me, bitch. Like you know what I mean? Nah, yeah, I, I, I got you. I got you. <laughs> I don't know. I just. I think you know what I see right now, especially is that like. So much of the conversation and so much of like what people lead with on both sides is like the sexual mm-hmm. stuff and like that. Like you'll you'll move the goalpost for it. There might be a dude that was interested in like building something, but then when the when that topic comes up and you you know you telling them this and I do this and I've done this or I'm into this now all of a sudden it's like all right, you know, my goal was this, but now I I really just want to know. And what mm-hmm. that mouth do? Like I'm really dead mm-hmm. like that. That's really where I'm at. And uh, and then somewhere along the line, like they might even figure out they don't really like you like that. But now their goal is is you know getting to that point. Mm-hmm. And so they're gonna they're gonna do the things and say the things and and play the game until they get there because they're not leaving without what they mm-hmm. came for. But you know, I feel like we gotta. That's why I be shying away from these conversations. Like it's just. It's too much sex, like too much. I I get it. I get. It. I'm not saying it's not important. I'm not saying I don't enjoy sex. I absolutely do. But if that's like the, if that's the main goal, like, I, that's it. Fucks right. things up, in my opinion. But I feel like okay. So you know my slogan: save your butthole for your for your husband. So I mean, you know, I really I feel like I feel like I'm doing something for the universe. Okay, like I feel like. I'm holding on to this precious gem of an asshole that I have for the man who deserves it. Now, granted, I could have did this with my vagina, but obviously we're here now and I have a son. You know what I'm saying? So I can't say I'll save my vagina for, you know, but nobody has ever injured my butthole. So I feel like, dude, you will be the greatest. You'll be the conqueror of... Of Zamunda. You know what I'm saying? Like, once you get this, you. you feel what I'm saying? You can nobody you you can but, you're the only one. You you're the only man that can say, I I'm the only man I've been in her asshole. I don't give a damn who came before me. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's I mean, not necessarily an asshole is a prize right. for dudes, but just like like having like being able to say this is this is my I'm the only one. Right. This is my my shit is exclusive. Right. Nigga, you don't even know. Like you can't have this, you can't right. have this. I'm the only one that got it. One on one type shit. Right. That that is a, a prize for dudes. But like I want to surprise them. What you talking about when you talk about how dudes be switching up on you, have you has it occurred mm-hmm. to you that you might you might be like an Erica Badu. You just might have you might be one of them joints that fucks people up and like, you know. Like I, as fine as Erica Badu is, I don't want that. I seen what he does. To what niggas. do you mean? I don't want it. I seen Common was a regular dude, Chicago mm-hmm. dude, regular ass mm-hmm. nigga. Guy with Erica. Next thing, next time you saw him, he had crochet pants <laughs> on and shit, you know, all that. Like just 
Life changed. Andre 3000, regular dude. He was rocking jerseys, Southern playlisted Cadillac music. Got with Erica. Next time you saw him, nigga had on a diaper or some shit. Like he was just, he went 100% left. What do you think I have? Uh, J Electronica. What's that? I think I have voodoo vagina. I think we don't know. I think we need that the way they be talking about vapes and stuff. Like we we don't know the science hasn't been tested yet. I think we don't know enough information about the effects of Erica Badu's vagina that you know, like people might need to shy away from. She got a candle that's supposed to smell like you know her nether regions. Oh, or but I'm like, I don't know if that need to be released to the public because we don't know what those fumes gonna do to it. You might you might be in that category, and if you think you know, if you think you know the uh, the vagina is doing it to him, I don't know what's gonna happen to the nigga that that finally conquers the butthole <laughs> as you so eloquently put it. <laughs> but Flynn, right? So listen, like, I, I'm scared for that but, nigga. I'm scared. For okay, him a but bit. okay, but in my head, right? This is how this is how women think, or let's just say this is how I think. Like my vagina is great. I wonder if. My personality, my vagina, and how I, I don't know, think about things is going to get a man to do right. But it's not working. So it's something else. I don't know what it is. And it, it makes you... No, uh-huh. I mean, women, have to, women do have to kind of give up on the idea that they can change a man. Mm. Like, or they can, they can get him to do right. I, a dude is either going to do right or he's not going to do right. And he's going to do those things because that's what he wants to do. He's reached a point in his life where this is the person that he wants to be. Mm-hmm. It, it ain't necessarily... He might do it while he's mm-hmm. with you, but it won't necessarily be because of you. It'll be because he just reached that point where now I'm going to do Can right. I ask you... So, like, I... I no, I just go want ahead. to ask you a question. Okay, so do you think that a man will change his ways being like, okay, let's say he was in a relationship for, I don't know, 30 years or or even 20 years with the girl been cheating on her left and right. Do you think that at some point he could change? Oh yeah. I definitely believe anybody could change. Anybody could say, but it's, it's, you gotta, you gotta be doing it for themselves and not for you. Like, you know, uh, I wanted to change. I did not want to be divorced. Mm-hmm. I was I, I was very proud of being a husband, very proud of being a mm-hmm. father. I did not want the divorce. And it's not like, it wasn't a shock. It wasn't a mm-hmm. surprise. I knew exactly what her issues were. I knew exactly what she wanted mm-hmm. from me. And as much as I wanted to be that person, I guess I just, I wasn't at that place yet. It, it, it honestly took like her leaving was probably the best thing she could have done for me. Wow. Because I don't know if I ever would have gotten the motivation to actually take the steps to be different mm. if she had stayed. If I had kept the thing that I wanted, you know, wow. being the way I was, I wouldn't have never had a reason to actually do anything about it. So her leaving was probably the best thing she ever did. But I, I'm definitely 100% a different person. So I believe that people mm-hmm. can change. Uh, but I don't necessarily think, like, you waiting around for it to happen. Is working in your right. favor. Are you sweating? It's hot in here. I'm, I'm just oily. I might be a little shiny. I don't know. You ain't got to. You ain't had to tell hey, people about it. this forehead so damn shiny? God damn. I got these lights on and stuff. Good. Okay. Good. I put on my anti shine moisturizer. I was trying to. Go ahead. Go ahead, oven bake. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. But yeah, dude, dudes can change, okay. but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think people should like just wait on it. Like it's gonna happen or it's not gonna happen. He gonna do it or he not gonna. Do okay, it. so let me ask you because this is this is advice from Flynn. Okay, so let let me ask you a question. So the next time I go on a date, somebody asks me on a date, right? What should what should I look for on the first date off rip? What red flag did I look? I mean, I. <laughs> you I mean, you I, red flag for me, you know how to point them out. Come on. It's simple things like you know, how seriously does he take it? Are you on time? You know, how are you dressed? Mm-hmm. Uh, 
you know, mannerisms, you know, you know, how they treating you, opening doors, pulling out chair, if that's your thing, like you need to be looking for those things. Uh the conversation where does the conversation go? Like that to tell you, you know, off the rip, like what what the goal is. The conversation about like relationships and, and love and getting to know you, or is it like does he just get sexual real fast or, you know, or is everything like super flirtatious on like a physical mm-hmm. level? Like people, cause you know, people can right. flirt with you like emotionally, like, you know, I like you. I think you're a nice person and they can compliment you on who you are as right. a person. But if they, if every compliment is about your ass or your titties, then like, you know what the niggas been right. looking at all night, you know, and you want them to look, but you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a level of respect. Like is, is this the dude that you want your son to emulate? Okay. Cause that's what you're right. looking for. Like, you know, you're looking for somebody that can teach your son, you know, how to treat a woman right. properly. Well, the first time you meet him, is that the way you want your son to act on his first okay. date with a woman? If not, then that's probably not the dude that's going to be able to teach him that. Okay, I got one more question. So, should right. um, should we go Dutch? Like, I pay for my dinner, he pay for his dinner, or should he just pick up the tab? Because that's the thing, too. Like, niggas be I'm, real keeping, acting like, like, man, like, man, you get a steak? Like, damn. Like, you get a lobster? <laughs> oh, man. Now I'm going to I'm gonna go to the ATM. Like, like, let me know if... I want to know if I can tell some, how to tell somebody, a man, if they cheap as hell. Because you can't really tell. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> nah. I mean, I'm a, I'm a traditional dude, so I'm definitely... I'm definitely in the mindset of, of, you know, if he asks y'all on a date, he needs to pay. At the same time, I do, I appreciate a courtesy reach. <laughs> I like when the check comes. If you just, you and you can be, you can be absolutely bluffing. You can have no money, no credit cards on you. But if you just make a move, like, like you was thinking about it and I had, I'm like, nah, I got it. Like, chill. Like, but I do, I do like that, that courtesy reach. Just a little bit of, you know. Just, just show like you might have, would have, could have, you know, kind of thing, and then let me step in and be like, nah. So you like stiff my arm, ex used to you show like up. stiff arm a girl hand out the way, or you just like, like just yank it, like nah, I got it. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna be polite about it, you know. Like if if you actually try to take the check, and I'm gonna feel some kind of way, like <laughs> oh, like I appreciate you, but like you got, you know, let me. I come from that school of men, uh, men protect, provide, and profess. Okay. So, like, you know, I got three jobs. If you're trying to take one of them, like, who do, like, don't, don't make space for me. Even if you got it, you got to make space for me to be a man. So, you can provide for yourself, but I'm trying to provide mm-hmm. for you. So, make that space for me. You might be able to protect yourself, but I'm trying mm-hmm. to protect you. So, make that space mm-hmm. for me. Well, what about the profess uh, now? The profess? Yeah, yeah. Let, I mean, you know, let me. I don't think that's necessarily a place you have to make a space for a person, but uh, but don't like I saw something the other day where people were talking about like dudes love bombing or they giving too many gifts or uh-huh. they doing stuff. You feel like they doing stuff because they want you to reciprocate kind of thing. It's like nah, if if I wanna if I wanna take care of you, if I wanna if I wanna tell my family about you, if I wanna you know like just let me do that and don't feel like I'm doing it with some ill intent. Like, but yeah. A dude shouldn't be hiding you or anything like that. Don't, you know, anybody that's trying to hide you or keep you from people, that's a red flag. I'm not big on changing my Facebook status, though. I'll probably, probably leave my shit at it's complicated. Oh, word. Can't. You one of those? These random niggas don't need to know what the fuck is going on with me. I, I guarantee you, if you with me, the people that I care about mm. know who you are. These random internet motherfuckers, I, they don't need to know what I got going on. Because that's when people just start... DMing you for no reason. Like, for some reason, y'all ladies like what you think you can't have. So as soon as a nigga gets scooped up or he in something, then y'all are like, oh, I see you. <laughs> you see me? You saw me two weeks ago, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yo, that's crazy. I feel like that's for men, too. Like, as soon as... I'm telling you, I could put a post up, like, oh, thinking about him or whatever, and it's like... Niggas is like... Oh, he he with somebody now. Oh shit! Let me hit her. Let me hit her up. I swear to God, this dude I ain't speak to in over ten years. Hit my inbox like, like you can see part. How's everything going, nigga? What? Why? Just why? What is the point? Like, why would you embarrass yourself like that? Like, be competitive. 
We competitive. Sometimes it don't even be about you. We just gotta be better than a another nigga. And this is the wow. way we can prove it. We could take his take his drink. And so yeah, sometimes it don't really have nothing to do with you. I had an argument with a chick once because uh we had been we had been messing around and it was public, people knew about it. And then as soon as we split, like my homie like tried to he did the little Facebook dating drink where you could say mm-hmm. you have a crush on somebody. And so he put it, you know, he went in and it was like, I got it. He had a crush on her and she found out she told me about it. And I got, I went off and she was like, well, you acting like you own me or something like that. It has nothing to do with you. This is a me and him thing mm-hmm. of all the people he could go after. And, and he didn't say nothing to me about it first. Like all you had to do was be like, Hey, I know you and so-and-so, you know, split. Would you be cool? You know, if I made a move when you try to do that shit behind my back. So yeah, it was, it was purely like, she was upset cause she thought like I was, trying to control who she went out with. Like, I really don't give a fuck what you do. But this nigga, is, he's disrespecting me. He's got nothing to do with you. Nothing to do with wow. you. So yeah, some, sometimes it's got nothing to do with you. So niggas be it's, dick measuring. It's beef between dudes. Like, like <laughs> unbeknownst to women. Like niggas be dick measuring. At the end of the day, that's the measure of a dude. Like when you look at a guy and you want to say how good of a guy this mm-hmm. is or isn't, you probably look at who he with. You know, and if he got, you can see the ugliest nigga, the ugliest nigga ever, but his chick bad, you like, either he got a lot of money or he got a big dick. Like, you just automatically, that's where you go. You see a beautiful woman with a ugly, with a, you, know, you see an ugly woman with a, a, a nice looking dude, you think it's something wrong with him, not what might be right with her. You know what I mean? Like, we get measured by what mm. we can attract. That's interesting. Mm. We buy nice houses. Niggas don't care about houses. You see, we don't even decorate. You go in a you go in a nigga house that ain't trying to get ain't trying to get nobody. It be a couch and a TV. We don't give a fuck about all that extra shit. Like we do all that just to try to attract women. What if it, what if it be a box ring in a uh, a crate? There you go. What I need? You think I give a fuck about this this comforter? I don't need all that shit. This is so when you see the bed, you're like, ooh, I want to be in that. That's all, that's all for you. you fuck about that comforter. Yo. That's interesting. All these pillows and shit. I don't need all these goddamn pillows. <laughs> Thank you for the tips. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to have that in the back of my mind. Definitely. All right. So real quick before we before we get out of here, to the, to the gentlemen that want to prove to you that uh, it's dudes out here looking for marriage and commitment and that they could somehow withstand whatever craziness you got going on over there that's driving niggas. Like if niggas want to try it out and see if they the one, if they can pull the sword from uh, the stone or whatever, uh, what's the right way to approach John? What's the right way to get your attention? Um, Be super nice and super genuine. Like I think with me and funny, I think with me, like, I'm so, like, down to earth. Like, if we vibe off of a joke, it can go far. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I'm, I just feel like I'm simple. I'm not like, oh, nigga got to have a a six-figure, you know, for me to have this pussy for. Like, you know, I feel like, you know, I'm real simple. Like, just be yourself. Be genuine. Don't don't try to be somebody else. All right, I get that. I get that. That's hard for people. Everybody is a, uh, especially in the social mm-hmm. media era. Like the person that you see online. I'm waiting for this conference so I can see if if people match up in person to who they are. You know, so online. I, I think we got a pretty genuine I'm, group. I'm not probably gonna go because I have a trip. But if there's another one, I'll try to make that one. But just so you know, I am like this. In person, on the phone, through text message, every, every which way. And um, I just always been like this. I ain't going to change. Somebody going to feel Somebody going to feel it. That's the way to be. Yeah, it's somebody out there for everybody. I believe that, that love is a risk mm-hmm. reward thing. You got to risk it all to get it all, but you only have to win once. You win, you hit the jackpot once, you good for the rest of your life. People, don't be afraid. Step out there. Just be genuine when you approach Johnny and just approach with caution. Like, just know other niggas have tried and had their life changed. Just be ready. Just just be ready. You you know, 
do some sit ups. Get yourself get yourself in shape. No. Be able to withstand. No, I don't. Whatever you don't is, have to happening. be in the best. No, no, because I got a I got a hoopa. You know what I'm saying? I got a little I got a little back fat. It's okay if you got you know your midsection ain't all the way together. It's fine. Don't listen to part. Well, do some do some therapy. Yeah. Make sure your mind is right so you won't get driven crazy <laughs> before you know, all right. when you slide in. If you out there in search of, if you trying to get this holy grail of butt holes, just be be prepared mentally. I heard, I heard, I heard it drives niggas crazy. Just holy grail. Be right before you go in there. Oh God! Right shout out, there. shout out to women who hold out uh, their butt holes for their husbands. You know, I'm a part, I'm a part of the crew. Yeah, you know, so I'm was, the, I'm the head. Uh, what you call it? It's been 30, 30 something years for me, baby. And I think I'm gonna keep it going for another five if I don't got a, if I don't got a husband by then. <laughs> Shout out to y'all! Shout out to y'all! But I, I know you said the the uh, the podcast is coming, but uh, for people looking for you right now, um, where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram at made dot ten twenty one, and that's M A D E ten twenty one. Um, I don't want nobody on my Facebook because y'all, y'all too fucking nosy. Y'all can, y'all can follow <laughs> my Instagram now. <laughs> I got you. But now I, I appreciate you hanging out with me. I think this has been a good conversation. Hopefully, people uh, picked up something from yep. it. Yep. And uh, we gonna might have to bring you back for uh, part two. Find find Johnny <laughs> love. For yeah, the for love part of Johnny. two. Yeah, it's probably it's, it's mad stuff. We can <laughs> yeah for the love of Johnny. We can keep going on this dating thing. <laughs> yeah, Alex, I gotta I gotta find a reason to come Alex off the bench. From, uh... <laughs> Alex Trebek. I don't know, Alex I don't Trebek. Watch this shit. <laughs> Alex Trebek. Yeah. Thank you, man. Let me get uh, buttholes for 800. <laughs> yo! Thanks, Flynn. I appreciate you, yo. I enjoyed it. No, yeah, this, this was a good conversation. But uh, for you all listening, if you made it this far, you the real MVP, and I appreciate you. If you like what you heard, you know, please subscribe so you don't miss any new episodes. Like and share. Tell a friend. Spread the word. Um, there's been a lot of movement on the podcast recently, and I appreciate everybody who's, who's been supportive. But yeah, tell a friend, you know, keep the movement going. And uh, please check out the merch store, What is TWS.com forward slash store. It's the sum of the algorithm. It's a coupon code algorithm. That's A-L-G-O-R-I-T-H-M. We'll get you 20% off your entire order. Help me take Chef Elise to Disney World or get her some new soccer cleats or something like that. Uh, it all goes a long way. Uh, but with that being said, until we speak again, y'all be easy. Be safe, be the light, and know this, if you know nothing else, Johnny is saving it for the right one. It's there for, it's there for the taking, niggas. So step up. Obama out. And I fucking love y'all. Holla. Last call for alcohol. <laughs> yeah. If this is it, like if, if this is the last joint, if this is the last run, it's the last call for alcohol, baby. I gotta say, whether you knew it or not, it's pretty much at the finest, the finest bar establishment Find the spirits and libations y'all could have had, baby. You might realize it now, you might have realized it back then. You might realize it later. Love. Love.